just to pray for me. When I'm hanging on the hangman's tree. Everybody had a couple uh, couple questions come in and uh, that I wanted to address. So here, let's jump right into it. Uh, John wrote in and uh, he said, uh, um, "Once again, thanks for this site. My interest today is around the song Boil Them Cabbage Down. I have been researching the Cree fiddlers of James Bay, and if I would say there was one standard tune, it would be that song. I googled the song, and Wikipedia says." Uh, according to Alan Lomax, this tune was originally associated with African slaves brought from Niger. So now I'm spending time seeing if, through one song, you can trace a path from Africa to northern Canada. Your personal tidbits about the song would be appreciated. Well, John, of course everybody knows Boiled and Cabbage Down. Uh, you know, I probably learned it real early on. I'm sure somebody, I would have learned it through tablature, though. Somebody handed me a stack of tabs and it was in there. So that's the only way I know it. I didn't learn it from a real person any kind of who had any kind of like tradition with that song. Uh, so nobody I know really taught me that. And I don't know much about it. I had always heard that it was probably thought to be African-American origin, but I don't know. And I, I would say one thing, I'm kind of suspect of that because, you know, it's like G, C, and D standard, like, tone and, um, you know, 4-4 four, four timing. Were they really playing that in, like, hundreds of years ago in West Africa on an accounting type instrument? I don't know. I'm not so sure if they were. But maybe, maybe it comes from Africa. I tend to think that it's probably a, it's maybe a, a, uh, an African-American song, you know. I'm not so sure about African. Who knows, maybe it is. Um, but that's really interesting that you brought up the Cree fiddlers, because I, of course, have heard of the Cree up there. Um, you know, I studied archaeology and, and taken a bunch of anthropology classes. I, I learned about them from, from that perspective. But they didn't teach us anything about their music, certainly not about any fiddle traditions. So uh, getting on the internet earlier today after I read your, your question and uh, listening to a bunch of that music, I listened, I found out about a fiddle player named uh, Ray Spencer, I'm pretty sure was his name. Man, some great music. Y'all should look up Ray Spencer, a Cree fiddle player from James Bay. I typed in those words and found him. Some great music and some great dancing up there. So thank you, John, for bringing that to, to my attention. And I encourage everybody to look that stuff up. Look up the James Bay Cree fiddle players and look up the dancers and stuff. Some pretty interesting things there. Um, another thing I wanted to address real quick, and I, I get this question from time to time, and I got it again today, is uh, people either um, ask or sometimes even assume um, that I am related to uh, some famous Hicks, like Stanley Hicks, for example, or Ray Hicks or Orville Hicks. And I always have to, you know, let them down. I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I'm not related to any of those people, as, as wonderful as they all are. Uh, I've never even met any of them. And uh, so, no, I'm not, I'm not directly related to them. I, I will, you know, say that um, we probably do come from the same part of England. Um, I have researched my, my family history enough to know that, that most people named Hicks um, in England, either are, are, are focused around London or they're focused up north more around Yorkshire, and that most of the Hickses in Appalachia, and there's quite a few of us, there's lots of Hicks families up here in these mountains, but most of us did come from that Yorkshire area back before the American Revolution, sometime after the 1730s and before the 1770s is when most of the Hickses came in here. Most of us came from Yorkshire. Most of us came in through um, Pennsylvania ports like Philadelphia and it meet pretty quickly went west up into the hills and the mountains. So my Hicks ancestors, they, as far as I know, they stayed in, in, the, in the hills in Pennsylvania and those mountains and stuff up to about, you know, the time of the Civil War. Uh, so they were there. 
and I'm not related to any of those people, and there's not really a lot of, my people were not really very musical, it was more uh, preachers and stuff, preachers and soldiers and, and sort of like shopkeepers and stuff in, in my family, going back that I've researched. So, sorry guys, I'm not related to any of them, and uh, uh, maybe I am distantly, but not very closely, not that I know of. And the other thing I want to show you all real quick is this this new mountain banjo that I've been working on for a friend of mine. I showed this to you guys earlier when I was it was a little bit rougher, and now I've got it a little bit more finished. Robin and I have applied a bunch of of coats of our uh, homemade walnut stain that she makes from the walnuts that fall all around our property here. So this is a black walnut neck stained with walnut. Uh, a deer bone nut that I just got sort of glued in there. Uh, this little pip here that holds the fifth string nut, uh, that is also some deer bone. And these are just bones that my dogs bring in from the woods. There's lots of deer around here and lots of hunters. So I don't even have to buy bone or even go look for it. It's always in my yard because I have two dogs who they go and get it. And so this, this crazy peg head shape, y'all, I decided to go with that. Um, this is for a, a friend of mine and uh, he's kind of a wild guy and I wanted to give him something a little bit different. So this is a traditional shape. It's kind of bifurcated uh, devil horn kind of shape. So I went with that. Uh, it's kind of neat first time I've done that. I always just do a standard hourglass or square peg head. Uh, and these are these uh, the, the handmade homemade tuning pegs. Uh, I'm trying to get them to focus. But Robin made all these tuning pegs out of walnut. So walnut neck with walnut pegs, deer bone nut. Um, this is standard, you know, local poplar, a uh, pretty cheap poplar body. But it is a nice piece of poplar, guys, with some, a purple figuring through it. So this will be for a friend of mine who is next on the list. Anyhow. I just wanted to show you all that and uh, answer that question. I know uh, that some of y'all are probably itching for some actual music lesson stuff. That's what you're going to be seeing from me next. So hang in there. And uh, thanks for watching. I hope y'all enjoyed that banjo history stuff. I would love to do more of that and, uh, and, and dig deeper. So as I continue to, to learn stuff or think of stuff, I'll keep sharing. And I would love for you guys to talk about any kind of banjo history related stuff in the in the comment like community section or something that'd be great so yeah there's the new banjo guys it's getting getting finished up this is a secret banjo by the way so don't you know keep it under your hat don't tell too many people about it because my buddy doesn't really know uh, how far along it is it's kind of this weird secret thing i'm doing it through his girlfriend i've got to sell it to her and she's going to give it to him so it's secret so to kind of keep it keep it to yourselves